Welcome back and today I'm going to be tearing down this 1275cc Sprite engine to go into bug eye number 5. Now you might say, hey, haven't you already done a video tearing down and rebuilding an engine for bug eye number 5? Yes I did and that engine is right down there. However, that engine is a 948 and that engine is now going to be going into the pink bug eye and I need to tear apart a 1275 and build that for bug eye number five. And that is what I'm going to do today. Let's get started. This engine I got off the floor in the garage where I found all the bug eyes and it probably sat there for decades. Let me turn it around real quick. On the side where the exhaust and intake manifold would mount, you can see that it's been open. This engine has been open to the elements that whole time. Mice can easily have crawled up into these holes and gotten into the engine if they were small enough to go through the valves. The engine is not seized up. I can turn it a little bit by hand. So at least we have that going for us. Let's start by taking off the valve cover and then the head so we can look down into the cylinder bores. I don't know if you can see it from your side, but there is still oil sitting up here. So that's a good sign that the valve train is not completely dried. There is some white mold or something growing on a couple of these pedestals. And over here, this is quite a lot of flaky d rust um, on this pedestal and these bolts. Some on these nuts right here as well. But I'm not too concerned about that. These head bolts are pretty tight, so I'm going to break them loose with a breaker bar first. That bolt is really, really hot. Luckily, all but one of the studs on this side came out and that will aid in getting this head off that's been stuck on here for so long. We'll get these high tension leads off and out of the way. Even these are stuck on because they've been on there for so long. The spark plug ends are corroded. So the head should be loose now and the only thing that's holding it in is the friction and all the rust that has developed between these studs and the head. I did forget about it but there's a little hose that comes up here from the water pump and connects onto the head. This is the bypass hose and I need to at least loosen the hose clamps. Let's try this again. Feels like it's teetering on this stud here. It's holding the head in because there's a lot of rust in this one. We'll just work it back and forth until it comes up. Well, at first glance, these two cylinders look all right. The pistons were up, nothing really got in there. Some stuff fell down, but that's not a big deal. This cylinder is pretty rusty, and this one is a little bit better. I'm going to put the push rods back in the head before I lose what order they were in. These are so rusty, I won't be using them again, but it's still good practice to keep track of everything. Let's take a little bit closer look. Here you can see how rusty this cylinder is. This is probably why I couldn't turn the engine completely over. The next one over, not as bad. It will take a lot to clean this one up. And then cylinder number four, the piston's up, so that one should be okay. So once I have everything stripped here, we'll have to get this machined and they will machine this one out to see how far they have to go to get all of the rust off the cylinder walls. And that will determine what bore all four of the cylinders get bored to. If we look at the head, it's a pretty similar story. That one cylinder that had a lot of rust in it, the valves must have been open on this one and 
for some reason water or at least humid air got into that cylinder and really rusted it. So all the valves are going to have to come out of here. The valve seats will have to be redone. We'll get the head surfaced and this will be as good as new. We know what we're dealing with now on the top end of the engine. Now we need to drain the oil and flip the engine over just to make sure that the connecting rods and the crankshaft are in good shape. Nothing weird came out with the oil. It wasn't half full of water. So everything here looks okay. Let's get this pan zipped off. Well, this is interesting. The screen on the oil pump has been, looks like it's been smashed. But besides that, everything looks okay in here. If we take a look inside the engine, you see a few of the pistons filled with oil. It doesn't look like anything has rusted in here. So next I'll get the oil pickup out of the way and get the rod caps off. That way we can get the pistons out and we can take a good look at the cylinders. Now when I remove the rod caps, I need to keep them in order so that they go back on the rod that they came out of. The bearings are just starting to show wear. The crank looks very good. Same thing on this bearing. It looks like someone has already stamped all the caps for me, so that's nice. As long as I get these back on the correct rods, they will all be numbered. Now I need to move the pistons down and out. The rings are stuck into the piston because this has sat for so long. Only half of this third ring and the oil scraper are loose. The rest of the rings are stuck. And that's why engines that have sat for a long time smoke because these rings are stuck and they're no longer sealing properly. Here's the number two piston. Bottom two rings are free. The top two are seized up. So this engine would have smoked pretty bad if we had gotten it running. Now we can turn the crankshaft out of the way. Get these other two pistons out. Number one, all the rings are free on this one. And number four, the rings are also freed up, but they're very, very sharp. If you haven't seen this before in a real engine, as I turn the crankshaft, there's two sprockets on the end here with a chain that turns between them, just like a bicycle. So as I turn this, there's a chain in here that goes down and turns the camshaft. Camshaft is right here. And as I turn that, there's another gear right here and this goes out the side of the block to turn the distributor. If 
we take a look at the cylinders now, they don't look too bad. Here's cylinder one. Here's cylinder two, the rustiest one. This is definitely more than just surface rust, but I think this will probably come out without going over 40 thousandths oversize. Cylinder three actually doesn't look that bad. And cylinder four, about the same as cylinder one. I don't even feel a ridge at the top of the cylinder. So it appears the only failure this engine had was being improperly stored for decades. And that's going to be it for today. If you want to see more updates on the Barn Find Sprites or this engine, comment below and click subscribe.